So in this section, we want to talk about what is the church? Why the church? Right? Uh, the last section, we, we really asked the question, um, cooperate with grace. Right? How does one cooperate with grace? Because we talked about the fact that Christ dies right, to redeem us. Um, he gives the Holy Spirit. Um, and it's by our cooperation with the Holy Spirit, by our acceptance of God's grace, using our free will, right, we are able right, to participate in what Christ has done for us and so go to the Father. Right? Um, but we need the Holy Spirit in order to be one in the Son so that we can be sons of the Father and enter into His kingdom, right? enter into heaven. Okay? Um, but really the big question is, cooperate with grace. How do we do that? Right? How, how, how? So we asked the question, what is the church? Because I alluded to the church in the last section, right? Christ established the church for us to cooperate. Well, the church is the new assembly of God's people. The old assembly was Israel, right? So Christ established a new assembly of God's people, redeemed by Christ, and it is the instrument of this redemption, right? That's what the church is in a nutshell, according to Catholic theology, right? Why do we say the new assembly of God's chosen people? Well, ecclesia is Greek, meaning those called out. Kohal, the Hebrew, means the chosen people. These are all words attached to um, church, ecclesia, church. Those called out are the chosen people, okay? So the successors of the chosen people of the Old Covenant. Remember the Old Covenant. Who are the chosen people? That is Israel. That is the people God has called out from Abraham through Moses Right? The Old Covenant people, the people of the Old Covenant were the chosen people. So Christ right, talks about the new chosen people when he establishes his church. He's talking about now we have the new covenant, right? the people of God. Right? That's what the church is. That's what it's all about. So Christ says to Peter, I will establish my church, my new assembly, my new chosen people, my new covenant with the people on you, Peter, right, uh, through all this. Okay, next. Redeemed by Christ. We're redeemed by Christ. What is the church? Well, here we go. Two, two phrases. Objective redemption, subjective redemption. Objective redemption is all about the fact that through Christ, all men are redeemed by Christ's sacrifice. Right? Through Christ, all men are redeemed by Christ's sacrifice. Right? That's objective redemption. It's objective. It's reality itself. Right? Christ redeems all men, right? Subjective redemption is very important to understand, though. Subjective redemption is all about this redemption, right? It has to be applied to the life of each individual, right? What does that mean for you and me, right? Christ redeems, all men are redeemed by Christ, right? But subjectively, the subject, us, right? This redemption has to be applied to our lives, right? To each individual. And here's where we understand Catholic theology, is that us, the subjects, we may or may not respond to grace or cooperate with this, right? Knowing that there's free will, right? We may or may not say, yes, God, or no, Christ, right? This blood of yours means nothing to me, right? Individual, we have a choice to say yes or no. Where do we have the ability to cooperate? That's a big question. Right? And we just mentioned I believe is an essential part, but in the early church and the Catholic theology, I believe is a beginning, but it's not where the cooperation with grace takes place. Continuing, the role of the church is to bring that objective redemption to each subject, right? each individual. Right? Highlight, star, underline it. I have it in red. Right? That's the baptism example again, right? Without Peter and the apostles, think of this. Without Peter and the apostles, what would happen when Christ ascended into heaven, right? Without them, Christ died on a cross. <coughs> he redeems all. But where is that applied to each subject, right? Well, where we see Christ, Peter and the apostles, right? After Christ ascends, Right? You have Christ saying, I'm giving my Holy Spirit, and through the apostles, the authority to give it. Right, And what do people do when they say, I believe? It is through encounter with the church, Peter and the apostles, that people encounter the water of baptism and the gift of the Holy Spirit that flows through 
this act of washing through water, right? Baptism itself. In other words, without Peter and the apostles, you don't have baptism. And you don't have the forgiveness of sins connected to this real thing, people being able to cooperate with grace. In other words, the role of the church is to bring that objective redemption to each subject and allow each person to cooperate with grace and respond to what God has done. Yes or no. I open myself up. Okay, That's our next section. Think about how this relates to us, right? It relates to us in the fact that here we are today, right? What's that all about? What are we doing? If we call ourselves Christians, right? what does that mean? Well, does it mean I just follow a guy, right? Well, what's that all about, right? For us, what we've seen so far is to call ourselves Christian, we understand that we are sinners, that we are called to cooperate with God, and that means we need the gift of grace and the Holy Spirit, and that means, right, we're separated from this infinitely. It means because of that, right, we need reparation, that's the cross, right, redemption, paschal mystery, but it also means, if we're Christian, we need that grace of the Holy Spirit as well again, and that flows from the cross, but we see in the New Testament that we receive the Holy Spirit in a real way. They talk about, first of all, baptism, and we'll talk about the other sacraments later, right, and so the only way we receive baptism is through that authority Christ established, Peter and the apostles, right? And Christ says, I will establish my church on you, Peter and the apostles. And what is the church? The new assembly or the new chosen people. And who are the chosen people? Those people in God. And how are we in God? Through the Holy Spirit, through Christ, right? We are with the Father. So, wow, what does that mean for us? To be Christian we are called not only to say, I believe, but to participate in the church as the means by which we receive grace of the Holy Spirit so that we can be right with the grace of redemption in a subjective way.